One of the most underrated and underutilized pieces of diagnostic equipment inside of a hearing aid clinic is the hearing instrument test box. Never heard of one? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain why it's so critical to have your hearing care professional use a test box to ensure that your hearing aids are functioning properly. Coming up. This video is sponsored by Natus, formerly Otometrics, the preferred diagnostic equipment supplier of Dr. Cliff AUD. Since the 1950s, Otometrics has been one of the most innovative manufacturers of hearing aid fitting equipment and diagnostic hearing and balance equipment in the industry. When it comes to testing and treating my patients, I only want to work with the best. This is why I use Natus in my clinic. When you take your vehicle into the shop, what is the first thing that the mechanic does other than asking you what you feel is wrong with your car? That's right, they hook it up to a computer and they run a diagnostic test on the car so they can identify exactly which areas are having issues. Well, did you know that your hearing care professional can run a very similar test on your hearing aids inside of a hearing instrument test box? We call this electroacoustic analysis or more simply, test box measures. When performing these test box measures, we can objectively evaluate your hearing aids to see if they're meeting manufacturer specifications for things like output, gain, distortion, and the input noise of those devices. And we can do this with a higher level of precision than we can if we just listen to those hearing aids and try to determine with our own ears what's going on with them. In fact, best practices indicate that every brand new hearing aid from a hearing aid manufacturer should be tested inside of a test box to see if it's actually meeting manufacturer specifications. Not only that, but every hearing aid that comes back from repair from the manufacturer should be tested to see if it's meeting those same specs as well. Some hearing aid industry data suggests that up to 12% of brand new hearing aids that come from a hearing aid manufacturer do not meet the manufacturer specifications. On top of that, it's estimated that up to 18% of repaired hearing aids that come back from a manufacturer are not meeting manufacturer specifications. I mean, can you imagine going and buying a brand new car and that car has a 12% chance of something not functioning correctly on it? And on top of that, can you imagine taking your car into a mechanic and 18% of the time he's going to give you your car back and it's not actually going to be functioning properly? That is exactly the same thing that we're talking about with your hearing aids. It's also a good idea to have these hearing aid diagnostics tested inside of a test box about once a year just to ensure that they're meeting specs still and to identify potentially anything that could cause a bigger issue down the road. All right, now that you know how important these diagnostic measurements are, I'm gonna go ahead and take you through the testing process and show you what we're looking for. In order to perform these measures, we need to prepare a hearing aid for testing in the Oracle Hitbox. This requires that we program the hearing aid in question to manufacture test settings. The whole concept here is that we're going to use the Hitbox to present calibrated signals to the hearing aid that is programmed to these manufacturer test settings and then record the output, gain, distortion, and noise level of the hearing aid to ensure it is actually functioning within the manufacturer's specifications. These measurements from the hitbox are presented in graph form and in numerical values. Every new hearing aid comes with a manufacturer specification sheet that shows the technical data of that hearing aid. Here is an example of what one of those sheets looks like. This is what we use to compare the diagnostic readings that are recorded using the test box. The curves in the Autosuite software should resemble the curves on the manufacturer specification sheet for the specific hearing aid and receiver power that we are testing. If we see something out of the ordinary here, it can indicate that the hearing aid is not performing correctly. Next, let's take a look at the numerical values. These values should be within a certain tolerance range of the numerical values presented on the manufacturer's specification sheet. These allowed tolerance levels are standardized by the American National Standards Institute, which is often abbreviated ANSI or ANSI. If these values are within those specified tolerance ranges, then the devices are considered within specs and are functioning properly. All right, so now that you know what we're looking for, let's take you through a few measurements of a hearing aid that I recorded inside of my test box so you can see how it works. First, I'm gonna start with a hearing aid from a patient who just feels like their hearing performance isn't as good now as it was a few months ago. And after doing a listening check on the device myself, it really sounded fine. But that prompted me to do a diagnostic check on this hearing aid to see if there's something objectively that we could measure to identify what the problem is. 
As I set up the device in the hitbox and ran it through the test sequence, performing full-on gain and reference test gain measures, things start off well, but some of these measures look like they could be outside of the allowed tolerance ranges. As we compare the hitbox measures to the manufacturer's specifications, we can start to see why the patient felt that their hearing has not been as good lately. Starting with the shape of the curves, we can see that the red curve is looking okay, but the turquoise curve is not as smooth as we would expect to see, as indicated by the spec sheet. This is our first red flag about this hearing aid. When it comes to the numerical values with the OSPL90 Max, we should have an output value that is no higher than 114 dB SPL due to an ANSI tolerance of plus 3 dB, so we're good there. However, the OSPL90 HFA should be between 102 and 110 dB SPL. So this is our second red flag that this device is not meeting specs, even though it is not significantly outside of the tolerance range. Next, we need to look at the amount of gain the device is producing for a 50 dB SPL input. And for this, we look at the FOG50 HFA gain, which has a value of 33.6 dB, but should be between 34 and 44 dB, which is our third red flag. Where things get really crazy is when we look at the distortion levels of the hearing aid. The spec sheets indicate that we should be no higher than 4.5 to 5% distortion at 500, 800, and 1600 hertz. We can clearly see that we are exceeding those ranges with distortion percentages of 22.9, 22.5, and 37.5% respectively. Even though our equivalent input noise, which is the amount of noise a hearing aid generates when it's turned on, is within manufacturer specifications at 19.9 dB SPL, the diagnostic tests clearly indicate that this hearing aid is not functioning properly. Okay, so now that we've identified that this hearing aid is clearly not meeting manufacturer specifications, even though it really sounded good to me before running it through these diagnostic tests, let's go ahead and see how it performs in the test box after I repair this device. Here's a direct side-by-side -side comparison of the hitbox measures. We have the device when it was outside manufacturer specifications on the left, and the new measures after repair on the right. The turquoise curve for the repaired hearing aid on the right has been smoothed out. The OSPL90 Max has been increased, but it's still within the tolerance range of 114 dB SPL. The OSPL90 HFA has improved to 104.7 dB SPL, which is now within specs. The FOG50 HFA gain has increased significantly to 38.3 dB, which is also now within specs. Distortion levels of the hearing aid have decreased greatly and are now well below the allowed tolerance ranges of 4.5 to 5%, and the equivalent input noise continues to be within specifications as well. So you see, without using a hearing instrument test box, it's really impossible to determine if a hearing aid actually is performing the right way. And you could actually be having a hearing aid in your ear right now that is not meeting manufacturer specifications. And the crazy thing is, is that you may not even notice that you're not performing at your highest level possible. If you want to ensure that you're receiving the maximum amount of benefit from your hearing aids, you need to do more than just buy the best hearing aids or even have those hearing aids fit perfectly by your hearing care professional. You need to make sure that they're still functioning within manufacturer specifications. After all, you wouldn't want to drive a car around that isn't functioning properly, so why would anything be different with a hearing aid? That's it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. If you like the video, please share it. If you want to see other videos just like this one, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, feel free to check out my website, drcliffaud.com.